May I speak with you? You go to this microphone for me. Namaste, thank you. Uh, Baba, my question is, I can't seem to slow myself down to be able to experience this isness yes. that we talk about. Yes. You're saying you cannot, you don't seem to be able to slow yourself down or your mind down or whatever, yes. so that you can experience the isness. Um, that is not necessary because there is no condition standing in front of the isness as a barrier. Isness meaning that which exists, that which alone exists timelessly, which cannot be affected by the play of the body and mind or what you may call the Shakti of Maya. Nothing can affect it at all, okay? Now you say, I don't seem to be able to slow myself, you use the word self, I say slow my mind down sufficiently to experience and to confirm the isness. I say that is not needed. Even racy mind is also a phenomenon observed in you naturally. You don't have to go anywhere to know. Now the mind is very busy mind is busy and now it says, wow, I must slow the mind down in order to really be aware of myself. That is also thought. It is also a thought that until my mind relaxes, I won't be able to focus on the isness or the self. I put it that that is not um, true. Uh, you are already that which observes the playfulness or the restlessness of mind or even body also. We only are clarifying now that you are watching that. The idea that that is necessary in order for you to be what you are, throw out that idea. Throw out this idea that you have to do something to be the isness. Even this idea of a you who need to do something to be the isness is also an idea. May I say like this? Even, you see, normally you will not hear this. We will come as much as saying, yes, if you can stop your mind, if you can control the breath, if you can do, then such and such will be the result. I'm pushing it a step further, and so please, if you can, understand what I'm saying. If I say you can control the breath, if you can slow down the mental activity, then you will discover the Self. I put a condition on the Self which is not natural for it. And I will also be reinforcing an idea that you are apart from the Self and you would need to do something to become the Self. There was a time when myself also believed that and it felt true. But now I see that is another idea, if believed in, will perpetuate the sense of separation from the Self. If the Self alone exists, where is the seeker coming from? In what dimension does the seeker exist as a reality to have to travel to meet the Self, which is itself infinite? What happens is that we are so accustomed to our identity shaped in the mind that even though this may make some kind of sense to you, your dynamic um, perception feels more true as the position of the seeker that needs to accomplish something than of the Self 
which is really what you are. So we will have to keep on speaking as though there is something to do, there's a gap to close, there's something to become. Because that is the language that the mind person will insist on using. Because to say, but you are the self, it will go, ah, yes, I know. But it will not confirm, of course, it is true. So it has to be proven. And this I hope that we can do together. The fact already is, no one can perfect the self. In fact, nobody can reach the self. This is a, may seem an unusual pointer or teaching, because we are universally convinced that we are separate from the God Self, from the pure consciousness, and we must do some work, some sadhana, to close the gap, if even to merge with that. So this is the common belief held by most uh, beings for a while. I say for a while, because we will move on from that. Any sincere seeker will come to a point when that will not be sufficient, it will not be satisfying, and a natural urge to go further will go, will come like that. So, again, the thought comes that I need to, my mind is too fast. It's just always, ah, some tsunami is happening inside my head, and I just have to wait until that settles down, and then I can pick up my sadhana again to see if I can get to the Self. But all of these together are thought. The trouble is, what I say, you will not immediately accept, because it will not feel experientially true. The habit is to believe, yes, but I still help me to get to that, because you are convinced of your reality as the seeker, and separated from your goal, you see? So, I'm pushing the game up to that kind of intensity, because here you will get today's result. Otherwise, I am promoting a journey that may take, we don't know how long, we don't know how long we have been on the road of seeking also. And now it has become clear, what is the misunderstanding? What is it that creates this sense that even we are under some spell? Why we can't get it? Because the we that, or the I that you think you are, itself promotes separation. The I, the, the self that you are is more real than you your present idea of yourself. Any change is not going to take place in the pure self, but to the non-self or the false self. Not that we have an idea that the false self must grow towards the pure self. In another way of looking, you can say the false self must continue thinning away, disappearing, until when it finally disappears, all that's left is the real self. The real self has not made any journey at all. But I concede, whatever way we perceive it, the important thing is that something is changing. Either if you feel I'm getting closer and closer to the self, does it have value? Yes, it has experiential value. It means that whatever concepts we have been embracing, that has become a kind of obstacle, they are thinning away, and you are experiencing more, the pure, the vastness, all of this is becoming much more natural for you. I need to take the time to explain this again, so that now when we come back to your question, which is, my mind is too restless, my mind is too restless, and many people ask, please bless me, please help me to have a calm mind. But I am going to give you, I am telling you, mind bypass that the mind itself 
if you believe, yes, because my mind is like that, I'm not, I'm distanced from the self, that thought has won over you. One thing, if I can take the risk of saying now, when we say the mind is blocking you from realizing the self, yes, I say the mind is your thought and your belief. May I say something else? That you who believe in the mind also is a mixture of something false and something true. I don't know if it is too early to be speaking like that. I say this because to say this brings a kind of ouch. Because something is protecting and preserving the identity of a seeker. God is playing all these roles and all these stages of belief in the journey of self-discovery. And it is a wise game, and it is quite fair, actually. But I don't want to go too far into that right now. I would prefer that the seeing becomes so clear that the false cannot be found anymore. So back to you, my mind is too loud and seems to get in the way of my focus. But that is also seen. That is also seen. Suppose your entire body form was full of noise. You are also the witness of that. But here is the real mischief. When that is believed, to hide the Self, which is infinite, and is there also more pronounced in the one who says, even the mind is so noisy right now, and knows that that makes no difference to what I am. But we will have to confirm, and it will have to be experienced in such a clear way, that you are the Self. You are not believing you are the Self, that you come to see, but I can only be this. Everything else is only apparent, and everything that is apparent is watched by me. You see? Yes, uh, conceptually I see it, and I also sort of conceptually see that, okay, the fact, the act of observing my restless mind is also awareness. Yes. But the fact that physically and mentally my mind is racing so much, I cannot no. seem to find time out to even observe no, the no. restlessness. The, 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 the fact that the mind and the body is so restless is taken to be important. The belief that the, my mind is so restless right now that you know I'm not able to go further, it believed in, creates the sense of an obstacle. It is not true, but if it is believed in, it will become true for you experientially. That is how thoughts work. A thought without belief has no power. A thought with belief can start a war or heal a nation's pain, even. Belief is the operational factor here. You see, we are believing what we are conceiving also. Meaning that now, presently, you are feeling, yes, my mind, if I, I just need to slow my mind down. And you may even take up a practice to slow your mind down, so that you can continue your sadhana and your journey towards the Self, which is all imagined. I am starting, you are the Self. I don't expect that by saying that it will be enough for you. But I am going to state the fact from the beginning, and then you are go I am going to set about to prove it for you. 
Otherwise, we are searching in the dark for which concept and this thing and so on. My way is direct and it will cut the journey short. Because the more we start to work with the mind, the mind will keep pushing up new concepts, new directions and so on. And we are habituated to believe in these things, you see. So, because I cut it, then sometimes what may happen is that it may produce within you some frustration. The seeker will feel frustration, which is also observable, by the way. If it is observable, sometimes you feel it is observable, but at the same time, I really wish it was gone. Understandable also, no? I just have to find what works quickest and best for you. If you can uh, see that you say, you said something earlier, but this thing here, of the mind and the mind noise, the whatever, all the shaking, uh, I only, I understand, you say, conceptually, did you say? I understand it conceptually? Yes. What makes the difference between conceptual understanding and true understanding? Why did you label it conceptual? What is the difference between saying, I understand this thing mentally or conceptually? Or, ah, yes, good. Yes, well, the serum is in. What makes the difference? Could it possibly be habit also? Something just won't accept? to be open enough that that will, will drop in more, that you say it's still something in my mind is using it. Maybe you mean my mind has, take, has taken that, those words that, you know, um, it, needs to, it needs to slow down. It's telling you, you need to slow down the mind in order to reach the self. And if that is believed, the mind has purchased a lot of time. Because it says, you're going to keep practicing to slow your mind down. And that's going to take some time. That's going to be very good. But if you know, but no, that's not true. The, it, to slow my mind down, what's that to do with the Self? How far is the Self from you? We can keep using concepts for a while until they, they, they combust into spiritual knowledge. They are useful up to some point, but not all the way home. Hmm? Again, we use a point. My mind is, is too noisy. I say, see this as a thought right now. It's only a thought, okay? You notice that thought. The one who is even aware, if, you say, if I say that's a thought, and recognize that that's a thought, if you say, but that's just a thought, then there should be more space in you again. Now, is that intellectual or is it experiential? It's experiential and I've experienced this. Yes, but now, not have, now. Now. But what scares me or what my problem is, yeah. is I experience... What's scaring you now or what scared you in the past? Right now. Okay, what's scaring now is? Is, I know I'm here and I can see it. I experience it. What? It meaning? This state of being able to even see the restlessness. Or yes. Okay. But uh, in the past, I've been through different meditations. What scares me yeah. about myself or this habit pattern? Uh -huh is this rush and like I've tried different meditation techniques or yoga mm -hmm. and I keep on moving, jumping, jumping. So what scares me is, yeah. okay, I see something very simple, very easy here and I resonate with your teachings and I've experienced it experientially. Yeah. But, oh, I'm going to skip, like I'm going to move to something else. I don't want to move to something else. Yeah, whatever move to something else, is also thought-based and observable. Stay with the weakness, but don't clothe it into some shape. 
uh, whatever you say, when I leave from here, what scares me when I leave from here, my mind will pick up another technique yes. to try and do something. Yes. The weakness has changed? No. No, you stay as the weakness. So gradually you see, I don't have to keep running after these, uh, these things that the mind is throwing out. Look, look, I throw you bread now, yes. now throw you biscuit, you know? Yes. You, you watch that, no? And by watching something, you are clear that the thing you are watching is what is moving, okay? You cannot be that, because you are here to observe the coming and going of those thoughts, feelings, sensation, ideas, no? Yes. If you were them, when they go, you would also be gone. Mm -hmm. But you are here to witness, but I am still here, now it is not strong anymore, it is gone. Pay attention to the weakness. We are too much projecting energy into the traffic and forgetting you are the weakness of this. Get stabilized in the weakness. Oh. Try to witness the weakness. Stop for a second. We are normally witnessing this thing going on, this thing going on, and we each telling the story of what's going on, which is totally subjective, by the way. No one's point of view is universal. But we are in the habit of that. The weakness simply is weaknessing, no? Weaknessing, okay? It's aware that even weaknessing is not really doing, it's happening also. If you take your attention from the traffic of what is moving and just put it more just on the environment, and the ability of witnessing, does the witnessing have any story touching it? You can do this now also, anyone can do. If, instead of the habit of going out into, onto the, into the crime scene, you stay only as the neutral witness, is the witness moving? Is the witnessing the source, the witnessing is present, the witnessing, no? And then also the traffic of things reported about. If you pay attention, just let the attention rest inside the witnessing. Is it spacious or is it claustrophobic? No. It is spacious. May I have stayed one step earlier also? Is it, could I also say that the act of witnessing or the function of perception is also perceivable? Anybody with me? That even the, the functioning of witnessing, that even seeing is also perceived. Seeing is seen also. Are you stretching to reach where I'm speaking? Actually, it's effortless. It only needs to be reminded of you, and you find that you are here. Do you travel to here? Did you have to step back physically? Or just the fact that it is pointed out to you again, an ignorance or a lesser seeing uh, become more distant? You're simply here. You, the original one, does not need to move at all. The traffic of reported sensation and so on, that is moving. Huh? The weakness, relatively, is not moving. Okay? Pay attention, be aware of the weaknessing itself. And what happened? The mind wants to tell the story what is happening. When you're telling and believing the story what is happening, you are unaware of you who is seeing this, including the story. If you can catch what I'm speaking, okay, you can cut this, these delusions very profoundly. It may take a while to stabilize in the total seeing, 
but you're not just running around in the bush anymore. The mind, the movement and all of this stuff, you keep identifying with it, so you experience instability in yourself. I say, yourself cannot be unstable or instable. You are the witness of even some things are so subtle that there are no names for them, yet they show up in your consciousness. And that is the power of consciousness. The more this is confirmed, the more grounded it becomes. The less you will find yourself pulled here and there by the mind flow. You will conquer it by not following the mind flow. That will be a development for you. You will experience more stableness in you, stability and peace and detachment. That is what equates to spiritual maturing or maturity. And these can happen very quickly also. But you need to catch it. Otherwise, you'll be following the mind's version to stabilize, which it will only be pretending to help you. Yes. Uh, if I try to be polite, then I'll just say, OK, and go away. But when you say, OK, remind yourself, then you need to catch yourself. Say again? So when you say, OK, throughout the day, remind yourself that you are even witnessing seeing, like seeing yourself seeing. Is a yeah. example. Let's not make it complicated. No. But I can't seem to stop to remind. You see, you put again that you must stop your mind. When you pay attention to yourself, your mind will stop. When you pay attention to your mind, your mind will gallop. When you pay attention to that which sees the mind, the mind will slow down. That's oh. how it works. Oh. Yes, now I see. Yeah? Yes. So, we are watching the phenomena of mind activity. We have been accustomed to that, we have been conditioned, it's been a culture mm -hmm. to pay attention to the movement of the elements, the senses, sense intention and goal, mind habit of fantasizing and projecting and so on. All of this is visible to you at a deeper level. I'm calling it a deeper level, but it's just right here. We are habituated to that. We speak to each other about things like this. But when you pay attention to that which is the perceiving power of all that appears in you, the whole thing slows down. Because there, there's no story. There's just a quality of beingness or isness. It's stable. As you taste that energetically, you already are attracted to it, because instantly you are in a field of peace. You know it, it's natural to you. The more you pay attention to it, you are falling in love again to that which is stable in you, because only here will you have lasting peace. Will you have natural conviction that you are not the traffic of comings and goings. Then you'll come to see every thought, every feeling, every idea, there's just like a cloud passing. You don't need to follow anything. You are like the sky, infinite and unbound. This must develop in you, that power. Mm -hmm. And it is natural, so therefore it should not take so much time or so. Only the habit or the reflex to keep referencing yourself through the mind and body will seem to slow you down, seem to. Yes, thank you. Thank you for now.